Hey guys, do y'all have one of these LS tractors? New Holland? Some Kubotas? A couple of Coyotes? Bransons? Korean made? Like this? Now New Holland, yeah, they're Korean, Korean made too. Um, if you get a seat that leaks, feedback. All right, so <laughs> let's get over here. Ninety percent of these tractors have the same style, one way or another. The, the, the knob may be a different color, but they're going to have a PTO switch. Now, the funny thing about these PTO switches is they're out here in the open. Rain, weather, corrosion really affects these switches big time. So if your tractor will not start, this one is a, see that, 25E? All right, it is a basic diesel tractor with a backhoe and front end loader and all the jazz. Now, the problem is, is that you'll get on your tractor. Last week, it started fine. This time, it just cranks and cranks and cranks and cranks and cranks. You check your air switch. You check your fuel pump. You check everything. Jump start. It ain't got, nothing works. And then you start fiddling around with this thing. And, oh, you check your seat switch, which has been already manipulated, if you see. <laughs> don't do that if you don't have to. Um, and then you start messing around. You start running this switch back and forth a little bit, and giving it a shake, and boom, it fires up. But that ain't a permanent cure. Practically only replacing the switch with a pair of toggle switches is actually a permanent cure. But let me show you what is a long-term cure. All right. So what I got here is I'm going to give you an idea of the design of this switch and what goes on with it. Now, you have a standard screw right here in the side. You pull it out until you kind of hear a back click. Hear that with the threads kind of give you the back click. And then don't lose your screw because it will be gone. Set it over here in a nice safe spot. Now, right here, you'll notice how this pushes back and forth. There is a spring with a contact to ground of the chassis of this switch. Now, the switch is isolated. It's not mounted to any metal. It's in plastic. All of them are the same. Some of them will have them down here, but the rain and moisture still gets to them. And what happens is you see this brass? That brass is also a contact. So when this switch goes from one side to your on, it's down, but bypassing the ground. See? But when you push it this way, watch the switch pop up. It's trying to make contact with the collar that's in here. And you'll notice that you can turn and turn and crank and crank and nothing's going to happen. Take you a can of deoxit. The D5 works about the best because it lubricates also. And you're going to spray it right inside. Now, one of the solutions I would recommend is put a nice tight O-ring around that. But you'll see how close, it, see how that goes all the way down? It doesn't solve it, okay? It doesn't allow you the full turn to get that over to PTO. This is your PTO switch, in case I didn't say that. All right, so you get it nice and tight there. Don't, don't over crank that. That's a brass screw, okay? To prevent the corrosion you just dealt with. Now, work it back and forth pretty good. Give it some taps. After you've done sprayed a good shot of that in there. And now, we're going to go down here to the key. Nice and warm day. Don't need to worry about the glow plugs. And fire up she does. Pretty simple. Okay. And let me shut this off. All right. So you guys that might have, like mine, the bolts, or not the bolts, but these uh, these little things right here, your, your, cover, your cover bolts, I guess you call it that, they fall out. You'll lose them. And I still got it. And you buy them. Those are $14. That's 14 freaking dollars. Now, if you've ever bought lithium batteries, you get the bolts with the battery. Usually they give you two or four extras. And this is a standard M8 that is the 15 millimeter fits perfect. Same threads. So you can put that in with a little bit bigger washer. That's been in there now for about six months. Not a problem. All right. In fact, I got one on the other side because that dumb thing on the other side fell out too. So now I got two of the battery bolts, perfect fit. And yeah, your New Holland's like that, your Coyote's like that, so is your, um, is it the Branson? Branson Branson's, the yeah. And this is an LS tractor. So it is um, pretty much all the same, a lot of the same parts. They source most all these same parts here, okay? Now, another thing is you see a lot of people that's jacking their, um, 
uh, their hydraulics up. This one, the LS is a lot easier to deal with than a lot of the other tractors. So you can just look right over here. Hold on, right here. You see this right here? Back fat nut out, turn that in just a hair to tighten the spring so that it requires more bypass pressure and you can get that one. But let me tell you right now, if you guys ever do that, because I know people do, showing the videos doing that, if you ever do that, you're talking a 32nd to a 16th maximum of a turn before you start blowing o-rings okay and unless you're working the bad streets don't blow o-rings okay guys now that's the game right there however this will get you up and running if you have an ls tractor or similar shutting down on you all right and now it even moves a lot easier four months maybe i'll do it four months from now again until i decide to put in a set of rocker switches that just you know three-way and fix the problem myself <laughs> permanently all right guys there you go that's a little uh, mt2 220 mt225 e hydrostatic very dirty and look on the channel we're doing a video of power stations that we use out here on the job and i got new solar panels for it we're gonna give them a try all right you guys be good